Yo. I'm going to do the flex fuel sensor thing. I went on Rock Auto and got a genuine GM part. It's made in Mexico, but it's GM, so it's got to have some quality control to it. The ones I've been finding on eBay, they're some of them some of them even say they're GM, but they're not or original equipment. A lot of them are just Chinese. I don't know what I'm buying when I go on there, so I got the real deal just to make sure I don't have any problems. I got this connector off of eBay though for super dirt cheap because it's kind of hard to screw that up. You're supposed to put this thing on a return line. I put E85 in my car and it's it's and there's a base map in there that's supposed to run on E85, but it's running super rich. And it's probably because I dumped E51 in there. You never know what you're getting when you when you pump fuel in a car. It could be E85, it could be E70, it could be E51. And um, with this, I can run 92 octane too if I want. So I can put whatever I want in there. And it should run a lot better before I go get it tuned. Um, I took the return line out already. That's what you're supposed to put it in, in the return line side. And I'm just going to use nylon hose. I've had to do this before on like, on CRVs that have return lines that rust through. Um, so I'm pretty sure it's going to work for this. I got a nylon fuel line repair kit that I'm just going to use for this. Um, I shouldn't need any of these tools though because this fits kind of loose. Well, it's not entirely tight, that's for sure. So, I got some little clamps that come with the kit. And um, I'm actually going to JB weld this line on. You're going to see how I do this. I've, I've done it quite a few times and I, I haven't had a problem with it. So that's how I'm going to do this. And I got a couple of fittings from the nylon repair kit. that go from 5 16 to this 3 8 quick connect. If you don't have one of these fancy tools too, you can get these connectors and you can use this by um, some people just use a caulking gun and and a hose flaring tool. If you want to look that up on the internet, there's a, there's a bunch of people that don't have this kit that can show you how they do it that way. It works. There's all kinds of fun connectors and stuff for this, but I'm not going to use them. Um, i got to take this piece out of here so I don't wreck it. My tool sucks. What's going on with my sucky tool? It sucks bad. It used to work nice. I don't know, I've used this so many times, maybe it just don't feel like being cool anymore. This thing got this thing got cheesy on me. I'm gonna persuade it a little. There it goes stupid thing. I don't know, I've used this a bunch. Maybe it just wore out on me. It goes in like that. I don't need a clamp on this plastic stuff either. This is never going to come off. There's no way. This one I can just put upside down like this. All good. I can't even twist this. It's so tight. Put a little silicone paste on these. I can just snap them in. So yeah, it's just got to go from here down to there. So I'm figuring I'm just going to kind of haphazardly stick this down here. And it should go kind of like that. I'm just going to mark this hose where I want to 
where I want to put it. Looks like I'm going to make a cut here. And a cut right up here. I can just unplug these now. Just squeeze in these sides. These pop right out. I can leave these on here. There, these are the only two pieces I need. I'm going to mix up a fair amount of JB Weld. This stuff is impervious to gas. And uh, it's a really good glue too, so it serves a couple of good purposes. It's going to make a real nice sealer for this. This is not the quick drying JB Weld either. So it takes a long time for this stuff to dry and that's what I like. I don't like that fast drying stuff. Because I like to take my time. I got nothing but time. I put the clamp on the hose. I'm going to put this on just a little bit of the way. Just so it just goes past the barb. You can tell it goes on way too easy. I put it on the barb first so now this JB Weld will get in the gas line. I'm just going to coat this line all the way around. When this nylon goes over the barb it does stretch open a little bit so that JB Weld will get in there really good. I'm going to put this all the way on, wipe off the excess. Then I want to crimp this just behind this barb. There are tools you can buy for this to crimp these. But I always just use the side cutters. Just like that. That's a good crimp connection. Basically that's just there to keep it from popping out. And of course I'm going to do the same with this one. This one might not be any fun for me. I got it. No problem. It's tight enough to where it doesn't turn. Nice. I think I got the right angle on this thing. We'll see when it comes time to plug this in. Okay, let's see if I got this good enough to fit. <laughs> Magical. It's a magical thing. It's in there. I just turned it down. I'm going to let gravity do its job. And just leave it hang there. And um, I put a little, little 5 16 hose in here. I just cut a slit in it and I threw it in here and I crimped this down. Zip tied it so the hose doesn't go anywhere. So it'll kind of keep it from flopping around too much. I don't know. It'll move around, but I think it'll be okay. I'm just gonna leave it like that. I got a big box of resistors. You can buy a big box cheap. They're the blue ones too, so they're nice. Um, I need a 2.4 kilo ohm resistor. So I gotta dig through all of these and I gotta find there's little letters on here. I got to find one that says 2K4, I'm thinking. I did some playing around just to get it on the mark. I use a 2.2 kilo ohm. And uh, I found 180 ohm. And I put those two together. 
and that gives me the right value. I'm right at 2.374 kilo ohms, so that's super close to 2.4. I'm going to solder these two together. Since I'm using a soldering iron that's way too huge, I'm going to make sure I didn't burn the resistors. So I'm just going to check the resistance of this again now that it's soldered. And it's fine. Cover both of these up. Now I need to jump it between the power and the sensing lead. Anywhere in the harness, so I'm going to do it right here. Poke a little hole in there. tape keep moisture from getting in here little extra insurance because I like insurance my liquid tape starting on fire whatever that should be a nice waterproof connection. I have a ground here I'm going to crimp and solder. Got a little too much solder on here. I'm just going to file a little bit of it off. These are going to get waterproof connectors. There. Nice. Time to regain access to the ECU. I already ran a wire. I disconnected the negative battery terminal too. I have this connector that came with Han data. I gotta look for pin AO. A N Oh, looks like it's this one right here on the end. Which way does it go, George? I don't think it matters. I'll put it this way. Plug that in, and I only need this one wire right here on the end. I'm going to fish it out this way. All these other ones can get cut. I'm not liking the fact that it's just going to be flopping around in here, so I'm going to I'm going to zip tie it. I feel good about that. I'm just going to cut all of these wires. Well, that should be cooler than I've ever been. Now that all my waterproofing's dry, I'm going to test this one last time. 2.377 kilo ohms. 
Well, that's really close to 2.4. I'm living with it. Let it hang. I'm gonna put this ground right here. I got just enough threads on there for a nut. I fed these two wires through the firewall. A little zip tie action. Well, it's working. It says ethanol percent 61. I got it set up in the parameters and everything. So things running richer than rich missing like crazy it should though it's running way too rich this thing's ready for a tune okay bye <laughs>